Well, since you were last here, much has happened to you. I mean, we have a stage play mm -hmm. and have a movie? a movie. There's a feature documentary, okay. um, which uh, came out, my goodness, three years ago and was in a, a theatrical release. Mm -hmm. And there is still a feature film uh, in the works. So, um, yeah. It just and we have this tenth anniversary album. Yeah. Have you seen that? No. Oh, you haven't. Oh, well, we got the book. I mean, is that the book. Yeah. yeah, yeah the new it. book. Yeah, new book. We got that. Is it, that in it? Is there something in there? That there's about seventy new pages in there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. and and they're really really lovely. It's um, updates on the story, uh, some new material about Hannah, um, new photographs, and then a whole bunch about uh, projects that kids have done. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that came out in um, almost a year ago, exactly. Um, yeah, ten years it was last year. So. Do so you pinch yourself thinking how this sort of came to be, really? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> you know, I guess for the tape, kind of roughly, how, how did it all happen? I mean, it, it kind of came to you as a, you, and you converted it into a. Well, I read I read about it in a community newspaper, the mm -hmm. Canadian Jewish News, which just announced it was folding last oh, really? week uh, after many years like many other newspapers uh, are uh, so that's where I first heard about it and then I turned it into a radio documentary and then out of that um, that woman I mentioned to you earlier mm -hmm. my publisher Margie Wolf who was a, a friend already who who was a child of survivors said turn this into a book and so uh, after much uh, procrastinating I did and yeah. Yeah, it's it's stunning what's happened. It, it's it's unbelievable. I always tell kids that uh, when I was 13, nobody talked about this. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Uh, survivors didn't talk much about it. It certainly wasn't taught in schools. There were no books for kids. It was just not on the radar. And so I had to search uh, hard to get stuff to read, but I did. And uh, yeah, and and. When I look back on my life now, um, there was this thread that runs all the way through it. Um, I was 13 to, to visit Buchenwald with my family. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and after that became completely obsessed mm -hmm. with, with that part of history. And, and uh, I mean, my university degree was in history, but it wasn't in Holocaust history at all. It was more a personal interest. But it was an enduring personal interest. You know, I wrote essays about it when I was in school, and then I did some radio, and I I um, did a series when I was in 1989, six hours called "Lost Innocence: The Children of World War II," and it, there's just this sort of thing that carries through um, my professional life and my personal life, and and the explanation for it I don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, other than that it's a tremendously compelling part of human experience. You know? What part of this story first grabbed you? I mean, was there, there had to be an aha moment where you said, aha. It was actually a, a bolt. Um, I, I described that in the, in the, in the uh, anniversary album because I had made this um, documentary series, the six hour one, and it just about um, just about killed me. <laughs> it was a really tough, tough experience. The best radio experience I've ever had in my life. It was spectacular, but boy, it was hard. And I just swore off making documentaries. I thought, I can't, I'm not doing this again. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing it on this subject. I'm not going near this subject again, except in my own personal reading. And then, and then I, I still remember where I was sitting when I read this, the story the first time. It was just boom, and it was, I mean, there were so many things about it, but the main thing that, that, um, that drew me was the weird combination of Japan, Canada, yeah. and, and Czechoslovakia, and, and also this, the, the, the search, you know, the, the, the mix of uh, horror and hope and you know, sadness and connection, and it, it is a very unusual story that way. And I, I mean, I think that's the main reason. 
there are many different reasons, I think, why the story has, has gone as far and wide as it has. But I think the main reason is that combination. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I get asked uh, often by people, you know, um, uh, why did you write this story instead of somebody else's story? And will you write my story? Which is kind of heartbreaking because um, every story is important, but every story can't be a book, right. you know? But this one had the ingredients, and I knew it just... I mean, I didn't know it was a book, but I knew it was a documentary. Right. It just, my, you know, my hair stood on end, so... Did you know beforehand that George was still alive? I mean, when, when you first cut, when the first article was out in the yes, Jewish Museum. I knew I knew from that article that he was alive. Um, willing collaborator in the story? Yes, very willing collaborator. Okay. And uh, I mean, I called him. I cold called him. I um, I was away for the weekend. I, I remember. All these weird little memories, they're, they're completely irrelevant to what you're interested in, but I was... I, I love this part of it. That yeah. I, to do. <laughs> I was away uh, for the weekend with a friend in Niagara-on-the-Lake, and I knew I wanted to contact George, and I didn't... And I knew also that uh, Fumiko was going to arrive in Canada sometime soon, and I thought, I can't wait. I can't wait. And I phoned him from there. And, you know, I just looked him up in the phone book. And are you the George Brady that? And he was. And he was very willing. And in fact, when it was over, the radio part of it, um, and the book idea came up, he was more than willing and, and very much wanted that to happen. And, and you know, my life has definitely uh, changed hugely because of this, but mm. his, uh, it, you know, it's been a radical um, shift because he, he, um, there's meaning in his sister's life. Right. He used to s joke to them that the number on, on his arm uh, was a phone number. Mm -hmm. And he really didn't talk uh, about the experience, and uh, and he kind of prided himself on being that guy who you know, lived for the present and future. And mm -hmm. but he had nightmares mm -hmm. um, about Hannah. He he sort of he he used to say he he had come to terms with the death of his parents, but he couldn't come to terms with mm -hmm. her death because he was supposed to be her guardian. I was amazed by the, uh, how, how the story was embraced, uh, not by individuals, uh, which it was, but by, you know, places like this and school systems mm -hmm. uh, and uh, public boards, Catholic boards. Um, it, it is, it, it, it seems to cut across all kinds of ages, backgrounds, institutions. Uh, it's, it's, it's totally stunning yeah. <laughs> to me, still.